Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to have a look at Bitcoin and when could we expect the next big move. So make sure you've hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, make sure you hit all so you see these videos pop up in your feed. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for daily Q&As and cryptocurrency updates. And there's also the special for the Investor Accelerator Patreon group. Links are all down below, so go and check those out after the video. Uh, I've also mentioned that the video is sponsored by Yield App. I'll talk a little bit more about them later on in the video. But for now, let's have a look at Bitcoin. And the first chart I'm looking at is BLX. So if you guys want to follow along, set your own charts up, that's the one that we're looking at. I've got it on three months. And what I'm doing here is just to have a look at history. So we've got a fair bit of history on Bitcoin now, all the way back to 2010 using this particular chart. So I want to have a look at when is the next big move expected. We've got the circled areas, which are the current quarter that we're in. That's why I've got three months here. So the quarter is July, August, September. Now, as you can see, just from a glance, not much really happens through July, August, September. But for one example, we had in 2015, after the major low in the first quarter, uh, this gave us a higher bottom. And that's basically what I'm looking for or hoping for in this next stage of the market. You guys might have different ideas. I'd love to hear from you down below whether you think this is just going to shoot up to a new all-time high. But just looking at history, let's start with 2010. So let's go back 11 years. Well, we can't really do too much because that was the first quarter that came in. So let's skip through 10 year to 10 years ago, July in 2011. Got to get those numbers right. Not much really happened here. We had the peak in April and the bottom in October. That's the quarter. So it wasn't actually in that particular month, but that's the quarter. So quarter two was the top, quarter four was the bottom. And quarter three, which is what we're in, uh, it was basically like a turning point. In 2012, nine years ago, we broke out of the accumulation and we didn't get a new all-time high, but the market was trending up. So we didn't really get a breakout and we didn't get any sort of bottom. Uh, the next year, 2013, so now eight years ago, again, it was a bit of an undecided period and the market was figuring out what it wants to do next. So it looks like a good period to be buying in hindsight now. Uh, 2014, the market was reversing, didn't get a low, didn't get a high, and we continued to trend down. As we just saw 2015, so six years ago, we got that higher bottom, which looked like probably one of the best times to have just loaded up on Bitcoin before it took off for that 2017 bull market. Uh, 2016, again, no top, no bottom, a little bit of an indecisive period. The market had already run up for a few quarters and then took some time to refresh to figure out what it wants to do. It's kind of sounding like now we've had that quarter two of the drop and July, August, September, the market's trying to figure out what it wants to do. We've had that run up. What does it want to do next? Uh, the best quarter that we've seen was 2017. So it did break out to a new high. Uh, in July, we got the, the low and then August broke out to a new high and then September broke out to another high. So, so far, four years ago has had the best quarter and a little different to every other quarter that we've seen in Bitcoin's history. Let's go to 2018 after the peak and we saw not much. The market really didn't go anywhere. 2019, we had the peak in quarter two, and then the market was trying to come down and figure out whether it wanted to take off again or continue down. So again, not much happened in 2019. 2020, we had the breakout in around August. So that was a good start. So it's similar to what we saw uh, back in 2015 and then 2017. So that was 2020. And now we find ourselves in 2021. So if I'm just looking at history, and that's a pretty quick glance of what's going on here. If I look at history, the numbers aren't on our side to get a breakout to a new all-time high. The numbers are not really on our side to get a new low. So that's good news if we want to see it hold up. Uh, it, it, the numbers are on our side if we want to see an indecisive period of the market trying to figure out whether we go up or down from this point. And the other thing we can note from the quarter three is that sometimes it likes to give us these higher lows. And you know, that's what we look for on the weekly chart, the daily chart, to give us a confirmation if the market is going to continue higher. So up, down or sideways, well, you could be pretty much say from the 11 years of history, this third quarter produces a bit of a sideways action, broadly, generally speaking. Now that 
say this quarter here in 2011, there is a lot of movement within that one quarter. But when you look back on it in history, you could pretty much say, oh, well, not really much happened. But when you throw the, the tools on it, there's 70% from that quarter. Let's go back into 2014. Yeah, that was a 43%. We go into 2017, which was the up month. There's 170%. So they still move around a fair bit, but it just depends on the perspective of where are we coming from. So there was a 30% high to low point in 2018 as well. So if I'm a betting man and I'm speculating on cryptocurrency, well, I probably don't expect the next big move to come in quarter three, just based on 11 years of history. There was a very good move in 2017. Maybe we'll get another one this quarter, but we tend to see the breakouts in that first quarter. See, we got the, the fourth quarter here. We got the second quarter for the top. We got the fourth quarter for the bottom. Here's the breakout in the first quarter. Second quarter got the top. Second, uh, fourth quarter got another top. Second quarter got a bottom. So it was a solid turning point in 2014, even though it doesn't look like it on the chart. That was a pretty solid turning point because you got quite a few months of a move up. First quarter, we got the bottom. Little triangles that I have here, the down arrows are the second and the fourth quarter. So there's another fourth quarter that had a turning point. Then we had the first quarter. Then we had the fourth quarter as a bottom. This was a fourth quarter top, which was the December top for Bitcoin. Then we had the second quarter. You, you can really see the pattern here. There's a lot of turns and highs in, like we just had this year, tops and bottoms in that second and fourth quarter. Now we could hone it down a little bit more and look at the individual months, which we have done previously, and we will do again. But you can see the second and the fourth quarter come up time and time again as the major, major turning points here with the odd uh, first quarter thrown in there. Now, if we look at the breakout, we got the breakout in the second quarter here, and then the first touch of a breakout was the first quarter. Uh, what do we got here for the breakout of the high was in the fourth quarter. So there's not too much that actually goes on in that third quarter, just looking at 11 years of history. So when does that next big move come? Well, I guess looking at 11 years of history, it looks like it's quarter four or quarter one. So that throws the door wide open to six months out of the 12 months of the year but it doesn't look like it happens in the third quarter, July, August, September. So that leaves us another six or so weeks within this quarter to settle down in the prices. We have seen nearly four straight weeks up for Bitcoin and the market's been really excited. We've seen that in the past and we'll follow that up in a future video as well. The good news for quarter three though is that we do like to see some sort of higher bottom, which we saw in 2015. We saw another higher bottom form 2016 and we saw a little mini breakout in 2020 could this be another higher bottom that we are forming in 2021 i tend to lean towards that as a possibility and obviously that's what we would love to see so that we get a little bit of a pause the market has some time to recover consolidate before we can start to kick up again for quarter three or quarter four or even both of 2021 to 2022. So ideally, that's what I would like to see. And based on the history here, I guess that's what we could potentially expect. I'll preface that with, I am not saying that any of these things have to happen. I can definitely be wrong in this. And I'm just using the data that I have here. So if I had to choose between an up, down or sideways for quarter three, I'd have to go with sideways. But I wanna hear from you guys in the comments, up, down, or sideways for quarter three. Remember that's July, August, September. Where are we gonna end up? Now I wanna say thank you to the sponsors of the video and that is Yield App. Yield App is DeFi banking in your pocket. Basically they're trying to make DeFi lending a lot easier. So working with DeFi products. Now you have to know that the product is a centralized, decentralized app. It's not entirely DeFi. So I wanna make that really clear if anyone is interested in looking at it. It's another one of these products where you can get up to 12% APY on your BTC, your ETH. Is, there are huge amounts here that they are looking to achieve. And of course that is also within their bonus of paying out in the YLD token. Yield App was also funded by private funding, close to $5 million, but it has since been launched. Uh, the token's been launched on TrustSwap and several other markets that we can see on CoinGecko. So the early rounds have been released and the price is sitting at around 40 cents with a market cap of 
46 million. Their team is fully doxxed, which you can find on the website. Plus, you can find all of their socials if you have any questions about them. They are a KYC and fully regulated platform. And if you want to learn more about them, I've left the link to their website in the description down below. Thanks very much for joining us on today's video, guys. Plenty more coming up this week. So make sure you've hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to be a part of the Investor Accelerator Patreon group, make sure you check out the link down below. The special is still on and the weekly report is coming out tomorrow. So jump aboard before we get to tomorrow's report. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.